So here we go with the Tibia Tango composed by myself and this comes from Theatre Organ Originals Book One um, which is this um, very exciting book that's really been a big, big hit around the world and uh, this was written during the uh, Covid lockdown and it's five new pieces for Theatre Organ, over 40 pages of music um, originally composed with the cinema organ, the theatre organ, the world so the Compton, whatever you want to call it, in mind. Um, and uh, we can send the books anywhere in the world, but you will need this book to get the best out of this how to play lesson. So visit my website, tomhorton.co.uk, grab yourself a copy of the book if you've not done so already, and we can send the books anywhere in the world Australia, America, Europe, England, and uh, lots of people have. Um, treated themselves to this book so thank you to all of you for your support and here we go with a little how to play video so we're going to look at today at page one page two and also um, the last bit on the next page so it's page 38 in the book i've labeled the sections a and b and so on so we'll keep an eye on those as we're going um, and we just heard there the the part that we're actually going to play now um, um, today I haven't actually got my um, my um, uh, solo keyboard rigged up, so we're gonna we're gonna be doing everything on the top keyboard. So this is the solo and the great lines. So that's just for the, the purposes of the camera. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we go. Right. So so registration wise, um, I'm using uh, an eight and a four foot tibia with the sub and the octave couplers on, and that gives me a nice big. Um, tibia sound. Um, of course, the tibia is the the fundamental sound of a theatre organ. What's what's one of the things that makes it sound so different to a church organ? Um, lower keyboard, we've got sort of strings and voxes at um, flutes at eight foot and a bit of four foot, and also the tambourine and the castanet. We've also got a harp on there, marimba harp, and that gives me a nice, very nice percussive sound. Um, and on the pedals, just some nice sixteens. And eight, it's just a nice set of you know things like the tibia, the bordon, diapason, the gamba. By the way, when you actually get your, your copy of Theatre Organ Originals, you actually get a set of registration sheets that tell you um, and suggest registrations for your organs at home or, or theatre organs. So um, here's the introduction. Let's play this through then. <laughs> Okay, so he has to have a four bar intro. Why? Because one, two, three, four makes it um, an intro um, like a dance, because most dances have four bar intros. If you do a quick step. And then you're in. So that's, that became a common thing, particularly in sequence dancing, very important. Um, so four bar intro is the order of the day. So. Notice here on the accompaniment, we've got um, some some really nice. Uh, let's uh, put the, uh, the music on the screen very quickly. Notice here we've got staccatos on the um, on the music, and that's because we want a really nice short, sharp effect from the pedals and the accompaniment. So let's just have a quick waltz through these um, these chords together, gang. So F sharp seven, two, three, cha cha cha. Two, three, cha cha, then E minor, cha cha, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, when obviously with a theatre organ, when you play the t the uh, tambourine and the castanets, as I'm using here, when you tap them like that, the, the in the chamber, the, the tambourine is just being shook very, very quickly. If you hold the keys down, you can see it reiterates. It keeps going. So when you see the staccato over the um, the chord, it means you need to really shorten that from, say, a crotchet to a quaver, a quarter note to an eighth note for our American friends, to three, E minor, to three. So then we're down here, look. So we've got E minor, two chords on the second beat. And then F sharp seven again, an A sharp there on the pedal. Watch out for that. The um, the leading note of B minor, and that goes to B minor, B diminished, and then back to. So watch out there. There's an F an F natural there um, on the pedals. Look, so I'm going B B diminished on F natural, and then F sharp seven. Look that one there has got a line over it, and, the, and that's called a tenuto mark. That means hold me for my, give me my full length. So three, 
four. Okay, so it's back to the beginning. We're going to go da 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 da. One, two, and three, four. One diminished whole. Okay, so that's how your left hand goes. So the, a, a good idea with this piece is actually to make sure that you um, practice the left hand the accompaniment and the pedal lines. Uh, by the way, if, you, if you're wondering about the score, you're probably noticing it's a bit unusual. We have four lines, and that's because I've written it that way. Um, <laughs> well, a bit of audience research went in it, and most people were saying, well, we'd like three staves. So, um, pedals, left hand, right hand. But I thought, well, if I lay it out for a three manual theatre organ, it'd be pedal, accompaniment, great, and solo. So, there are lines written for the solo. Now, if you've only got a two manual organ, you can play those on the top keyboard. Maybe if you're playing an electronic organ at home with a split feature, you can play down here. Um, but obviously, there are some three manual organs out there now. Um, those are with Allens or maybe Versi Pergamons and things. Um, but you can adapt the book to any way um, that you see fit. So, Here's the melody line. Now, the melody line starts with a rest on the solo line. That's the melody, so we're going to go rest. Remembering that we are in the key of B minor, so there is F sharps and C sharps, but we've also got an A sharp that we can put in. Okay, um, so that's very important. Also, we can I've used a G sharp, because in minors, you can do different things, but you can raise the seventh and the sixth note for melodic and harmonic minors. Um, um, so harmonic is the seventh, um, the melodic is the sixth and the seventh, so there's different extra notes going in. So it's one... Notice that big sound there from the eight and four foot tibia. I'm using the main, the main solo tibia, um, but the sixteen and the two foot effect are being made by the octave couplet. So it's just two stops, two coupler stops, job done. One... Rest, then a little scale, so thumb on the G, watching out, and then off on the first beat. So watch that again, so three, four, one. Rest. Do, 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 do. Oops, slip there. Getting excited, gang. <laughs> so there we go, that's our introduction. So let's put that together slowly. Here we go, one, two, three, and chord. And then on the C sharp, we're going to play the quavers here, the pedal, B minor, like a stab look. One, do, do, do. Da, 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 da. Okay, then we're going to go E minor. Now the reason we're holding there is because there's a, a penchant of the tango music style, the genre, if you will, um, is that sometimes we hold certain beats to give more emphasis, and so that's what we're doing on that F-sharp 7 there. As you can see there, there is an F-sharp dominant 7th chord, but we're also going to trill on an F natural. Now there's a sharp next to the trill, so that means you play the F natural as your first note, but trill above it to the sharp, not the note next door. So don't do this. It's got to be F sharp and F. So we're doing that, okay? So we're doing that little movement there. If I put the camera on, it would help. And it's just for three beats. So one, diminished, three, four. And then it goes into the next page, F sharp. We've just put a, a, a parenthesis uh, F sharp in there just to remind us that it's an F sharp melody. So that's the introduction, folks. So that's called section A, and we want to work that through first of all. Here we go. It's so all together. One, two, three, and. <laughs> Okay, now of course, many of us watching in the UK um, will probably have images in our um, in our mind of the Blackpool Tower Ballroom, where of course they have a wonderful Wurlitzer organ with three manuals and 14 ranks of pipes plus a piano attachment. And that of course is famous, or was made famous, by um, the great Reginald Dixon who played for dancing and occasionally concerts there, but entertained hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, over his career. 
And um, now there's a team of organists there, um, headed by a guy called Phil Kelsall, and they carry on the legacy of the what we call the Blackpool style. But of course, the organ is used in conjunction with an electronic organ. They kind of alternate, but they play for ballroom dancing. So those of you who are on YouTube, but of course you are on YouTube because you're watching this video, um, if you search for Blackpool, Blackpool, which is Blackpool, so B-L-A-C-K-P-O-O-L, Blackpool Tower Wurlitzer, and you'll find some great videos of this beautiful ballroom um, and a wonderful Wurlitzer being played by some very talented um, organists. So there's your intro, folks. <laughs> So notice the space look I've got between the two apartments. I've got I've got the departments. I've got the accompaniment and the pedal working as my band, and then I've got my instrument up here. Off. And then charge, charge, charge. Trill. Now, what you've got to do is at the end of the trill, because the end of the trill is going F F F sharp F F sharp. You have to make sure that you then finish on the F sharp over here for the start of section B. Now B is um, the second page of the piece and also this last page over here. And that's what we're going to have a look at in this lesson today. We'll then have a look at um, the uh, the next few sections in the next lesson. But we don't want to over overburden you with this one, so to speak. So here we go with section B. Now, now the melody, again, um, is now very, very straightforward, very, very tango-like. But we are going to play this on the great keyboard. So you probably have like a trumpet kind of rank, maybe on the solo, and then your tibias ready here. So you have your registration set up. And don't forget, those of you who've already got the book, you should have a registration sheet set with it. If you haven't, send me an email on my website. I can send it to you as a PDF. But that should have been sent to you. Um, when the book was shipped. So here's the second section. One or two extra chords in there for fun. Um, yeah, hey, why not? This is what it's all about, adapting things. Um, so, uh, B, section B, bar five up here, okay? So we're now on page two. Um, we're gonna take a look through this part here. Now, to make the uh, the tango sound a bit more interesting, we've used an E minor six chord. Minor sixes are brilliant. It's what we call the James Bond sort of style chord. It's one of those, those um, atmosphere kind of chords. And um, when you do the James Bond stuff, um, that's uh, E minor. C, C sharp, there's the minor six. And all those chord styles are all part of the bomb theme. So I've popped, I've popped in um, um, some, uh, some things there. There is a C sharp in the, in the chord there, just to remind you. Um, so we're going along E minor. But notice look, I'm being very, very short and sharp. Same on the pedals as well. You might even want to put the accompaniment to pedal on, maybe a reed on the, just so you've got a real good, maybe a piano on the pedals, that might be interesting. Okay, nice and nice and short and sharp. So here we go then, so here's the chord. So E minor. Okay, then B minor. So on the end there, look, there's a pair of quavers, so watch out for that. And then we want C sharp minor with a top sheet sheet thether thether wrong teeth. <laughs> she she C cells C sharps on the C sharp C sharp minor one two. Here's that F seven F sharp seven chord again. Look, that's our dominant seventh to lead us to our cadence. And then an A sharp on the pedals. So watch the pedals there. Look, we're going um, C sharp C sharp F sharp A sharp then to B. All right, so watch out for that. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, and three. And then at the end, there's a one, two, and three. So I, I can stretch with my foot. You can just go one, two, and three. You can do that or go bum, rest, da, bum. So it's bum, rest, da, dum. And we hold the chord down. One, two, do, do. Okay, you could cut the, the chord a little shorter there if you wanted to. Okay, so mostly just straight um, single beats there. Just with the odd quavers on beat four. Da-dum, da-dum, one, two, and three. 
okay, and that gives it a nice clean ending. So that's four bars, okay. Now that theme then gets repeated, but we'll go now with the melody. The melody is a v because we've got these very, very staccato chords. We want a nice long drawn out melody. So don't forget we've still got our um, our tibias set up. As I say, you could probably do a different sound for the solo um, at the beginning um, because we want something to alter. So we're going to go one, two, three, and four, and so it's da da rest. So watch out for that because there's some articulation in there, and the articulation is da la 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 da da bum. So there's a a tenuto mark and then a staccato mark. So the A sharp is held, and then you come off the B nice and short. Da 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 da. Bar. Okay, and then notice on the next bar, look, uh, we've got C sharp to E, A sharp to F sharp. Same style though. Short on the last note, long on the first note. So, ba bum, ba bum, ba. Okay. Notice the A sharp is a very common note. That's because that in a minor key is the raised seventh, which we use a lot in minor keys. So when you're playing, it's a case of learning your right hand and your pedals. So you can do those. Okay, but then the melody, it's gonna be nice and smooth with articulation. Okay, so that's bass section B, okay, that's all through there. Let's pop that now together, and it goes like this. One, two, or one, two, three, four. Okay, balls five to eight again, three, four. There you go. You can do some if you if you fancy doing a again. That's fine. Put that in. That's that's your choice. You want to do a little little version of it yourself. No problems at all. Okay. So that's really nice. So just remember though, F sharp and C sharp are the fixed notes. Okay. They're 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 all the way through. But the A sharp will make a. Um, a very common appearance. So once you've learned that bit, the next bit is very straightforward because it's basically the same apart from the end. So again, look, we've got our trill now here on um, on bar eight nine. There's a trill. So we're going to go one one two rest trill, and you just trill as fast as you want, but you must finish on F sharp because that will be landing on the next beat. Okay. All right, here we go then, into the next bit. One, two, three, and four, and. Now, same articulation there. Now, there's, there are some little differences there, particularly in the pedal line. The pedal line, instead of going E, 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 B, 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 we're now going to pop in a, um, a variation on the pedal lines. So it's E, G, B, G, B, F sharp, B, B. So do, 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 do. Very short though. The chords are the same. Except for one variation on the end there, look. We have got a held quaver. So we're going to go chump, 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 chee. Now when you do the quavers, you normally do them like that, but the second one I want you to hold it. Now, can you hear the little reiteration? You get that in tango music. Dum, dum, dum. It's the dum, you know, the dum, when they sort of dance, dum, <laughs> that kind of thing. The dum, we'll call it that. So we're going to go with this kind of style, okay? We're going to go a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and in. And then you go into the next chord, which is C sharp minor, like before, F sharp seven, dum, da dum, dum, dum. 
and the ending's got a little chum to chum 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 which is a bit more Argentinian so it goes B so it's one and a two and dum okay dum da da dum 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 actually play it as it's written that would help one two three four one da da dum bum bum okay dum da da dum could actually change that we could go could take out the second semiquaver one da dum bum bum that's quite nice as well but that's the rhythm that's written so it's sunflower quaver done do and then it walks down to the C section. Okay, the C section. I shouldn't call it that, should I? <laughs> yes, this won't hurt. Um, so, so yeah. So that's that's your first um, your first part um, of the main theme, which is section B. So let's play that through. Then here we go. Bar five. Turn the page. Okay. Now, there's one variation in the melodic line at the top there, and it goes same articulation. Look, C sharp, E, F sharp, A sharp, B. Okay, so. Dum, da, da, dum, ba, bum, dum. Then we go into our next section. And we'll look forward to playing that in the next video. So there we go, everybody. So that is the Tibia Tango. Sincerely hope you've enjoyed that. And that comes from this rather awesome book, if I do say so myself, Theatre Organ Originals, Volume 1. Five new pieces, all different styles, arranged for the theatre organ. And so you can play them on your home organs as well. So thanks for watching, everyone. Do hit the subscribe button. And if you want to hear how the other songs go, there uh, there was a um, uh, when the book first came out, we did a couple of live streams on to launch the book, um, so you'll be able to hear all the tunes on there um, and enjoy the way they sound. So thanks uh, for your support, and I hope you've enjoyed learning the first part of Tibia Tango. We'll see you very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.